This is CNN Breaking News. Welcome to Lead. I'm Phil Mattingly in for Jake Tapper. And we start this hour with the massive breaking news. Our very first look at CNN's exclusive interview with Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris. Harris and her running mate, Governor Tim Wall, sat down with CNN's Dana Bash, an interview that wrapped up moments ago in Georgia, where Harris and Walls are trying to win over voters in what will be one of the most important swing states in this election. Now, this is the pair's first interview as the Democratic ticket, and it's Harris's first interview since the presidential race was upended less than six weeks ago. And I want to go straight to CNN's Dana Bash. Dana, a pivotal time, a pivotal moment in this campaign. The first ballots get mailed out next week. Tell us about the conversation. Mm -hmm. Hi, Phil. Well, it was wide ranging. We talked about uh, several issues that are very important to voters, including and especially, of course, the economy affordability. One of the key uh, issues for Kamala Harris is that because she has not run on her own uh, since she ran briefly during the 2020 cycle, is what are her policy positions now versus what they were before? And I asked her about a few very specific uh, policies, for example, on immigration and on uh, the issue of energy, the Green New Deal, fracking, and then more broadly talked about her changes and how that could or should affect voters. Listen to that exchange. Generally speaking, how should voters look at some of the changes that you've made, uh, that you've explained some of here uh, in your policy? Is it because you have more experience now and you've learned more about the information? Is it because you were running for president in a Democratic primary? And should they feel comfortable and confident that what you're saying now is going to be your policy moving forward? Dan, I think the, the, the most important and most significant aspect of my policy perspective and decisions is my values have not changed. You mentioned the Green New Deal. I have always believed and I've worked on it, that the climate crisis is real, that it is an urgent matter to which we should apply metrics that include holding ourselves to deadlines around time. We did that with the Inflation Reduction Act. We have set goals for the United States of America and by extension the globe around when we should meet certain standards for reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, as an example. That value has not changed. My value around what we need to do to secure our border, that value has not changed. I spent two terms as the Attorney General of California prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, violations of American laws regarding the passage, illegal passage of guns, drugs, and human beings across our border. My values have not changed. So, Phil, that is her sort of broad uh, explanation of some changes in policy and what she would do as president now that she is running at the top of the ticket in 2024. But as I said, we did talk about some of the specifics, which you'll see tonight. Dana, you mentioned wide ranging. Uh, I don't want you to give it all away. Obviously, it airs at 9 p.m. tonight. But what else kind of top line people did you have an opportunity to speak to them about? Well, we talked about that was just domestic policy. We talked about foreign policy. But, you know, another, because she has not uh, sat down for an interview yet in this very quick, very unprecedented uh, race that she is running, uh, how did that happen? Uh, the fact that we were even having this conversation wouldn't have been uh, a thing a little more than a month ago because she was running for re-election as vice president. And I asked her about the phone call that she got from President Biden when he announced on that Sunday, July 21st, that he was going to step aside and not run for re-election. And uh, she told me that it was maybe TMI, but that she wanted to tell me the story of how that happened. So you have to wait, Phil, for that TMI for the story. <laughs> Can I ask, Dana, just uh, from an observational perspective, you covered Governor Walls. I think you covered him in the House. Uh, you covered uh, Senator Harris, Vice President Harris. As you noted, this has been a whirlwind and they're in the midst of a crazy sprint mm -hmm. right now. What, what, what was your impression of them when they sat down as they went through this interview? Well, they're just getting to know each other uh, as all candidate and uh, running mate usually are, uh, especially since that they are on, you know, what the first week after their convention when they were formally nominated. I, uh, and before, when they 
formally accepted the nomination, rather. I actually spent yesterday with them as well. They're on a bus tour here in Georgia, and they just had a couple of quick stops, one to a high school, another to a small business, a barbecue place. And I did get to observe their interaction a little bit. Um, you know, it, it is, uh, it, it, it obviously is different from just a senator and a House member, but it is kind of the, um, the getting to know you stage, but they do seem to have a comfort level with one another. And the big question is going to be how they translate their connection to the voters, and most importantly, the policies that they say they want to, uh, to achieve and to enact for voters, especially on the question of affordability, the affordability crisis in America right now. Speaking of whirlwinds and sprints, I believe that's been your week as well. Dana Bash, we appreciate you unveiling the first sound of this interview, uh, which you, everybody friend. will be able to see tonight at 9 p.m. Dana Bash for us live in Georgia. Uh, Vice President Harris, Governor Walls, it airs tonight at 9 Eastern only on CNN.